In this video, we're going to try and understand what the cost will be for climate-oriented policies, because this is what is stopping us in a difficult situation when there is unemployment or people have trouble finding a job. Now, the equation is simple. The carbon price must allow all countries to reduce their emissions until the marginal cost for reduction will be equivalent to the price of carbon. Let us look at this graph so we can understand. Two countries here who want to reduce emissions by the same quantity, except that one country, country B, seems to be more gifted, smarter, and the price, the reduction price curve climbs more slowly. So if they want to reach the same objective, country A will do it with a C cost with an A index, much lower than the C price index B of country B. And they have to make an effort until their marginal cost will be equivalent to what is uh, shown here, P star. For this, country A will reduce emissions less, country B will reduce emissions more, but country A will have saved the equivalent of the red triangle, whereas country B will export emissions and will earn the equivalent of the red, the smaller red triangle, net profit. It's a matter of common sense. It's a win-win situation if there is a single price for carbon. But when an idea is simple, unfortunately, the real world will make it complicated because there are economic industries or sectors which are more or less impacted by the carbon tax because they transform energy more or less, and some are upstream of others and will find it easy, the, easy to make the others pay. Fiscal systems or tax systems are very different and the incomes are different and the energy expense for poorer households is, takes a bigger share of their income than uh, for wealthy households and the carbon tax bears more on the income of somebody who and the well-being of somebody who earns two euros per day rather than 200 or 2000 now there is another idea that we also must understand there is something less tangible i'm referring to the propagation of cost between industrial sectors between households and between industry households and public administration or state government. Now look at this graph. Everything would be simple if for a carbon price of 10, everybody paid 10, except that's not the way things are, because the cost of this will, 10 will become 10 plus something, plus X, for instance, when it is built by the energy producing company, and also the uh, cost will be forwarded to uh, all the industries that uh, need energy to make steel or concrete and all the other companies downwards. In the kind of simulation that we use, the propagation or multiplication phenomenon may end up with a very heavy bill to pay, no longer 10 but 15 or 20. This is going to be obviously harder to bear for households, although they're not aware of it, and it's going to affect companies' competitiveness. The only way to avoid this is when companies are taxed by 10, their tax burden is also reduced by 10. So taxes are reduced on uh, the energy used for production. Studies have been conducted in European countries and the United States, and the best way would be, for instance, to reduce uh, social expenses, company expenses for social benefits, because this is the only way to exonerate production from the tax. Talking about energy and climate-oriented policies, what about the three tools that are available, taxes, quotas, and standards? In reality, all three tools are being used as a mix, but it, it would be better if one could understand the advantages and disadvantages of each. Carbon tax, very simple. E 
pays a tax, transfers it internally. There's no international transfer. We know what we pay in terms of tax, but we're not quite aware of the result as far as tax deductions are concerned. Now, if the tax is well recycled, then possibly the social cost will be lower than the technical cost. With quotas or caps, things are different. Here we have international transfers between countries between countries where the reduction cost is uh, higher in direction of those countries where the reduction cost is higher, usually in direction of uh, developing countries. But there is an important issue here. How do we attribute quotas between China, India, European countries or the United States? Which rule will be considered as fair? Here there is a challenge which was never, never solved, addressed during the Kyoto Protocol, but never really solved. With this system, we're aware of what the results will be, except that there, is, there will be an uncertainty. A country faced with an unexpected cost might possibly not comply with its commitment to the uh, protocol, although it signed it. And also, because there is a risk of propagation, there is also the risk of social costs being higher than the technical cost. The result changes if the uh, allocations are auctioned, because in that case, some money will be used to de reduce the taxes, but in that case, why go through such a complicated system and not directly through the uh, carbon tax system and standard. In the standard system, the cost is hidden. It's not known, but it is transferred to the consumers and the users who will in fine pay for it. Efficacy is there, but it's not, not as obvious as would be expected because of the rebound effect. I'll explain. If, you, if I have a more efficient car that only uses two liters instead of four for 100 kilometers, I'm probably going to drive more because the price of uh, driving will be lower. Or if I am given a more efficient engine for my lorry, for instance, more goods will be uh, sh transported uh, in lorries rather than on trains or ships. So better technical efficacy will be compensated for by a greater use. This is it for carbon prices, except that in the uh, dynamic equation, not only does the carbon price cost uh, matter, there are other factors. For instance, if you take cars and mobility, the price of petrol is essential, but also people who are moving out of town to live outside. It depends very much on incentives given by uh, various uh, towns around the bigger towns or the fact that supermarkets are moving out of town. The same goes for renewable energy. Very often they are intermittent and therefore it is necessary to organize uh, distribution networks and grids. But this depends not only on the use, but also on the regulating policies. The same goes for the uh, fuel market, which depends on the uh, price of land and the work carried out by, agric by agriculture. And finally, there, there is the possibility of biofuels. And finally, there is the uh, risk of uh, low carbon uh, investments because they will come up against certain variations in the price of oil and the currency exchange rate, which could very quickly uh, cancel the carbon tax impact, and there are technological uncertainties that must be reckoned with. In summary, the economic and social cost of a uh, climate-oriented policy is not only a matter of technical cost. It, the increased uh, energy prices uh, go with uh, tax incentives and financial incentives. It depends very much on the policies for the uh, transport, uh, urban management and land management. So it depends very much on the fact that the measures should not be adopted only for climatic uh, reasons, but also to address other economic and social problems.